I don't cover coloring because the last book you can look at for that. So I just covered the, the rest of the artwork, just creating basically the black and white steps of it. That was actually a, a really good idea that my friend Jim Mitchell, the one who wrote Chance of a Lifetime, because he was saying he wasn't sure where to jump in at. And if we had a step-by-step, then that would create that would at least give somebody an exercise they can then go, okay, now I understand what this is like on a small scale. Let's get into manufacturing actual pages. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Was it hard to create a book that caters to both the all digital and hybrid methods? Because I noticed throughout the book you provided walkthroughs and opportunities for people, because I know you work all digitally, because it really did a really nice job of showing both methods. I know as a fan for myself, one of the reasons why I read this, I'm always interested in comic creation and how what that process looks like. It's made me just really respect what all of you guys do in order to put together an issue. But I can imagine from a, an artist, a professional artist who's looking through this, you're going to get people who want to dabble in continuing to do the pencil and go into some digital or they want to go all digital. So you're gonna, you've are gonna you got a, a wide audience who are looking for a lot of different options on how to use this. Was it hard for yourself, though, to craft a book that covers both? That was actually a, um, one of the easier aspects of creating the book, just in the sense that that is the same... Well, I guess I struggled with the concept of how you could utilize the advantages of working digitally, but then utilize that in a traditional workflow. And so that was, like you had said, that I work all digital, and that is true for the vast majority of pages. But I'll pick uh, basically the hybrid method of working developed from my own experimentation with trying to have some sort of originals at the end of this process. And so I would pick the, started off with one single page of just trying what can I get away with digitally, and then how do I get it onto the artboard? Do I need to light box it? Can I print light blue? Or since I'm inking this, can I find a way to print high-resolution, crisp, black lines of the structure onto the artboard? And that was the, the process that I went through. So documenting it afterwards was actually pretty simple because I understood I, from my own perception what the concerns would be of an artist who still wants original pages at the end of, of the process. Working digital has so many advantages, but one of its only and it definitely its biggest disadvantage is that at the end, if you work only digital, then you have nothing left. You have no originals to show or to sell later. And that's a really big disadvantage, you know, in, in a just from trying to make a living, basically. Yeah, with uh, Chapter 2, Why Go Digital, I like the fact that this did have pros and cons listed. It, this isn't just a book about, woohoo, digital so great, forget about the other stuff, get rid of the old, in with the new type thing. <laughs> it's showing the pluses and the minuses here. There's some stuff you got to deal with. And I got to say, I really just like the fact that periodically throughout this book, you kept calling in for backup. Well, backing up the files, but calling in for backup, same deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> calling in for backup. Yeah, one of the other disadvantages of working digitally is that there is the, the real potential of losing data either from you know a hard drive crash or a virus or something like that. And if you have a, a thorough and methodical backup procedure, then effectively you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, and backing up in general is just a good idea. It's a good habit to be in. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely call for <laughs> I call for people to to use backups uh, in in general. And I I describe my process of backing up, which is pretty... um, Pretty uh, extensive. That's a nice uh, nice layout you got there with that. You had a daily, then when the issue's done, then, you know, and it was just, I was like, wow, that's really going out there. I'm like, outstanding. (laughs) Wow, that's slightly psychotic. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to say psychotic. I was going to say actually good. (laughs) I can Wait, I can relate to you now. You could shoot a bullet at my computer now and I would lose anything. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was, it wasn't for anything on DC. I lost about three days worth of work or something. And I mean, three days is, you can count it on one hand. But to me, that's like about, that's a work week for most people. That's like 45 hours probably worth of work for, for most people. So it was maddening, you know, and the fact that I couldn't recover, I couldn't recover any of the data. It was like, I've got to start making more methodical backups. The intro by Brian Boland was very cool. How cool was that? Did you have, uh, how did that come about? That was all my, my editor, John Morgan, is my editor for the How-To book, and we're friends now as well. Over the last couple of years, we got to know each other really well. But he asked me for a list of digital illustrators, digital comic book artists that he might be able to contact to, you know, to to get someone to write a foreword or an intro for the book. I don't know if, I mean, he might have already knew that he was digital, that Brian Boland was digital, but he was on my list. There was two or three other guys. That's the extent of my knowledge, but it was, as far as how it came about, it was very cool, though, to see 
anything by by Brian Boland. I mean, he's been around for a long time. He's still producing great work, and I mean, he's been working digital for much longer than me. I remember seeing uh, some sort of a short, very short uh, tutorial that he posted online that was probably for Photoshop 7, or maybe it was even earlier than that, and that's been a few years ago, so it was very cool to see that from him. I just want to go through real quick what some of the chapters are, and we can chat a little bit about them along the way. There's Chapter 1 Genesis, which is how you broke into comics. There's Chapter 2, which we just kind of talked about, why go digital? When we get to Chapter 3, the tools you need, this, I'm a techie myself, and I really liked seeing this one because it's, can I use what I already have? What do I need? Do I need a PC or a Mac? Softwares, tablet you need, tips for your working environment, ergonomics. I was like, yes. I'm like, you're preaching to the choir here. I love it. And even how to calibrate and change the settings on your monitor or the tablet to suit your needs. I thought it was great that you added so many personal tiny elements to make this transition as stress-free as possible. Because you talked about how this is a process that it's going to take you some time, if if you haven't dabbled in it before, to really kind of adjust to trying to work. Work this way, but I liked that you put in some tips for people based on your own, uh, I guess, stresses. Maybe would be the word as you were developing your own work environment. Like, hey, these are some things that I just learned that were going to be really helpful. Uh, I, I really appreciated that. I even stress in there, like the very first thing I think I talk about is that technology is a moving target. So even as this book gets published, basically the the, the clock is ticking for as far as technology and how long the specific RAM and processor and and monitor size requirements or whatever, those things will quickly become outdated by the numbers. So I do list the things I'm using right now, but make it clear that these aren't the numbers that will always be correct. It's, It's just about finding what works well for you. And the reason that I put in there a mention about ergonomics is it's something that I think especially guys who are in their, you know, early to mid 20s don't think about as much as they should. I know I did not. So, and after a long weekend of working on a in a computer or any actually any environment and that includes just drawing comic books traditionally, if I was slouched over and stuff back when I was working, you know, doing a lot of freelance work, I had just a lap desk and I would sit either uh, with my legs crossed on the floor in front of my couch or with my legs tucked underneath me with my shins flat against the ground. And I would do that for, you know, for all of Friday night and then all of Saturday and Sunday. And by Monday, my back and my legs would really be hurting. And that's not the best ergonomic way of sitting, obviously. So I mentioned that sort of thing in there, uh, the, the mention about ergonomics and adjusting your, your settings so that your eyes aren't strained. And even for the, the Wacom uh, settings, uh, you can change the mapping so that the mapping on a Wacom tablet is the area in which you you can inhibit the area that you're drawing on your Wacom tablet. So even the Wacom tablet that I'm drawing on, even as we're speaking, is a 6x8 Wacom tablet. But I have the area that I'm drawing in mapped down so that it's probably only see about a 3x4 area, something like that. And the reason is because the smaller motions of my hand or wrist pay off much larger on the screen. It also depends on how, how far you're zoomed in, but I can draw, not to get too technical, and I don't know the specific names for it, but imagine if you're standing at a blackboard and you need to draw a really long straight line. You will most likely, where you draw from will be from your shoulder. Like that'll be the pivot point for where you're drawing the line from. So when, and that applies also to when you're drawing on a, a large piece of paper on a drafting board or something, Usually, if you're drawing a really long line, other than using a ruler, of course, you're going to be mostly drawing from your elbow or from your shoulder. Since I'm, I've isolated my body where I'm not, the majority of my body is not moving while I'm drawing comics. All that's really moving is my left hand sitting hot keys, and then my right forearm and wrist and hand are the only thing that's moving over on the right hand side. I'm actually pointing to it like you guys could see it. <laughs> on the right hand side of my, you know, uh, where my Wacom tablet is. And um, it's good to minimize movements, that way you don't get the repetitive stress injuries or whatever they're called, and that you're not wasting a lot of movement or, or you know, drawing drawing something on the screen that might look a little shaky, and that's because you're trying to draw too large in a way. So you need to zoom in a little bit more and maybe reduce your mapping so that the smaller lines you're drawing actually look like longer, more fluid lines on the screen. 